Oh. All right. Thank you for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, AKA the Brick Archivist, and today we are continuing our look at my massive Lego collection. Last time we took a look at the first half of the minifigure wall frames, starting with collectible minifigures and ending with Marvel. Now we have all sorts of themes to look at that are from varied and diverse years of Lego history. Of course, we have Lego's original themes like Chima and Nexo Knights. We've got some licensed stuff like DC, and we've even got some of the more obscure ones like Monster Fighters, Hidden Side, and Pirates of the Caribbean. So let's dive in and take a look. Before we get into the rest of the minifigs, there's one aspect of the collection in this area that we still have to cover, and that's the mosaics. Of course, this is because we put out a video already detailing both the official LEGO art mosaics and my custom Bionicle ones, which you can see here. That video, which linked below, will go into how to make your own mosaics with a very nifty online tool, as well as the tools needed to make these specific ones. So please go check out that video if you want to learn more, and regarding the rest of the collection here, aka the Bionicle Masks, well, we'll get to that when we get to the rest of the Bionicle collection, so stay tuned for now. But of course, moving on from the Marvel walls and going back to the minifigures, next up on our list, we have the LEGO Adventures theme. Of course, we start off with the many iterations of Johnny Thunder, who was for a long time LEGO's mascot, and you can see the two modern iterations in the 2014 LEGO Movie version and the collectible minifigs version from just last year. Of course, all of his sidekicks like Dr. Kilroy and Pippin Reed are along for the ride as well, as well as these side characters from the Adventurers universe. One of the most unique minifigures that you can see here is Achu from the Jungle sub-theme. He's one of the most detailed minifigures they did at the time, and one of the only times they did such a detailed cape for him. So, as you can see, this is obviously one of my favorite ones. But moving on from Adventurers, we have its spiritual successor, Pharaoh's Quest, which you can see over here, I believe the main character is a descendant of Johnny Thunder in the quote-unquote lore. Obviously not as classic as the Adventures ones, but there were some nice ones like the Pharaoh, which you can see here in gold, and the Anubis guards next to him. Now moving on, we have the underwater themes from Aquazone over here, two Aqua Raiders, both one and two, and even Atlantis down here. You can see the Atlantis characters have all of the rotating keys, which they used to unlock certain things. And one of the coolest figures that came out of Atlantis was this King of Atlantis figure, which was one of the first times that LEGO actually did a metallic cast for a minifigure in that color. But Brick, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on LEGO's original action and adventure themes. Did you have one that really stood out to you or one that you really liked? Or maybe even some figures that are especially nice to you, even looking back nowadays? Overall, probably Atlantis because of the fish monsters. I thought the, a lot of those were cool, primarily the three in that line, as well as I think the shark one. That being said, the power miners, big, big figs were really cool. Oh yeah, I would definitely agree. But moving on, of course, we have the underground themes, which starting off, we've got Rock Raiders over here. Not too many minifigures from that. But then we move on to Power Miners. There's a lot of different variants. The Silver Armor Advisors were really cool. The visors are obviously reminiscent of Ice Planet, which we saw in space, as well as the Rock Monsters. You'll notice that I'm actually missing one minifigure from Rock Raiders. That is, unfortunately, the Chief. And the reason that I am missing it is because that minifigure is simply super, super expensive on Bricklink. I believe he is over $100. I just can't justify paying that much for a minifigure from a theme that I am pretty much just okay with. I don't have any particular love for Rock Raiders. So maybe at some point I'll fill that gap, but as of right now, he is not part of the collection. The reason he is so expensive, however, is because he only appeared in one set and it was a very limited quantity minifigure pack. This was back when they still did minifigure packs and didn't stop doing them because Hasbro had them stop the Star Wars ones. So obviously a very limited and exclusive minifigure. I'd like to have him in my collection at some point because he is pretty iconic, at least for LEGO video game history. I know a lot of people are into the Rock Raiders game. There's a whole sub forum for it. But personally, I'm not as big of a fan as many, so it's not high on my priorities list. But I guess moving on, next up on our list, we've got LEGO Castle. This is not every single LEGO Castle minifigure. It is just what I have on hand. The reason for this is that I don't own a lot of the very old vintage sets. I'm not a huge collector of LEGO Castle, so... I don't think I'll ever own all of them, and these are just the unique minifigures that I have on hand. That being said, I do have representations from pretty much every single sub-theme of LEGO Castles, so you can get a clear sense of how LEGO minifigures kind of evolved during the course of this theme, especially the minifigure and face designs of some of the Knight's Kingdom stuff, and even their attempt at a proto-Ninjago with Knight's Kingdom 2 having different colored minifigures as their heroes. 
Of course, in, in the mix as well, we've got Vikings and what some would consider the best era of Castle, Fantasy Era in 2008, as well as their later attempts in 2013 with the standard Castle stuff. But I guess that is the entire Castle board. Brick, what are your thoughts on LEGO Castle as a whole? I like Lego Castle, mostly the, the most recent few versions, those being like Knight's Kingdom, as well as the whatever castle run it was, which had the, the trolls or orcs there. I like those two waves a lot. Yeah, it's just a nice like vanilla theme, very easy to army build. You can kind of get any sets to get into it. Um, it doesn't really matter which ones. And uh, yeah, just thought it was a pretty cool theme. Shame it had to die. Hopefully they'll bring it back at some point just not in another form like Nexo Knights. Well, I can definitely agree with that, and I'm sure a lot of classic LEGO fans do too. But I guess turning our gaze upwards, we have the first of these Star Wars boards. This is every Star Wars clone and stormtrooper. Obviously, we are doing a current video series on these, so we won't go into much detail at all, really. We can just take a look at what we have here. Some of these standouts being, of course, the Phase 2 Troopers, because those are always rare. You can see we transitioned from clones to stormtroopers, from the prequels to the original trilogy. And my copy of the Moss Eisley Cantina is not here yet, but I will be having to add a Sand Trooper in there when it arrives. Of course, also over here, we have the Chrome Silver Stormtrooper, a very rare one now, very expensive. It was a May the 4th promo and a pure name magnet as well. We have another very rare one, the Captain Rex Phase 2. I know Brick has spent literally months trying to get one at a good price. Phase 2 Captain Rex makes me sad. That's all I have to say. And of course, the Shadow Arf Trooper, one of the rarest May the 4th GWPs. That one's super rare and expensive online as well, so those are probably the most interesting and rare minifigures, at least on this wall. Of course, a lot of them, you can see every single iteration right here. And moving on, we have the First Order Stormtroopers, which are kind of the same style, I just couldn't fit them on that one board. And this is literally every single one of them, just the same as the previous board. One of the interesting things is that I also have made a clear note that the two different helmets are different from the Force Awakens to the Last Jedi style. So they actually switched the print on the helmet there. But moving on down here, we have the Jedi board, which is obviously a little bit more sparse than the one above. I have allotted space for all of the missing ones, and this is a very clear work in progress board. I am still currently ordering on Bricklink to be able to fulfill all of the missing holes in this board, but hopefully at some point I will have them all. I don't know, Brick, what are your thoughts on the Jedi minifigures as a whole, and do you have any favorites? Um, When it comes to Jedi, probably my favorites, either Plo Koon, Pong Krell, um, they're pretty cool. The Battle Damage Vader from the Force Unleashed video game is pretty cool as well. And any other standouts? Uh, all the Ahsokas are pretty high quality. I agree with you there. I love the Ahsoka figures, especially the two more recent ones, the Rebels one and the Adult one. I think they just have really good facial prints, which I cannot say the same for the original ones. And just overall really cool figures. The other more interesting ones to me, obviously Pong Krell, but also the Ithorian Jedi is really interesting to me, and I love that they're reusing his head in the Mos Eisley Cantina. Of course, I have to pay my respects to Jedi Bob, and the Blind Kanan is pretty cool as well. And I think the other one that I think is especially rare and special on this list is the Chrome Darth Vader. So the story behind this one was to celebrate the 10th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars, LEGO made 10,000 poly bags of these Chrome Darth Vader figures and they were randomly thrown into the 2009 Star Wars sets. And obviously this is the same Vader that we got in 2008, but they used shiny paint for the chrome instead of the regular black. The other way that you could get this is that it was given away at certain LEGO Club events in Germany in Legoland Deutschland in October of 2008. So obviously this one is super rare, super hard to come by, and I am very lucky to be able to be owning this one. But moving on down here, we have our other Jedi, specifically Luke and Rey. There's just so many, almost too many Tatooine Lukes. Hey man, there's a lot of land speeders. <laughs> you got that right. And we have a ton of pilots as well, some book exclusives like the Celebration one. Moving on to episode 5 and 6, we've got all of those variants there, and even the Last Jedi version at the very bottom. Where's uh, Luke with blue milk going to go? Oh no, that's going to push me to an odd number. Yeah, good luck, have fun with that one, buddy. Oh man. But I guess moving on from Luke and Rey, which we have down here, we'll take a look at the next Star Wars board, skipping past some of the ones over there from the other themes, so we'll get back to them. And we start off with these quote-unquote allies and side characters who aren't Jedi. So, of course, we have Padme and the prequel characters like Jar Jar and the Gungans. And we go all the way down to the Rebels, like Han Solo, Princess Leia, Lando, and so on. 
You can see over here we have the Rebels crew of the Ghost with the exclusive Zeb Aurelius minifigure, a very rare one who only originally appeared in that original Ghost set, so it's really nice to have. The other cool thing is kind of seeing the evolution of minifigures from, say, the, for example, the very first Han Solo up there, going all the way down to the more modern variants, and you can see all the different variations so far. What's really interesting to me is just the sheer amount of the same character that they've made multiple times in minifig form, or at least similar character. You can see that here with the pilots, just so many rebel pilots here. Obviously, they all have different names and characters and whatnot, but they're all pretty much very similar. And you can see the Cloud City Lando here. Now, I will say this is not the original one. This is the remade one, the original Cloud City Lando I sold when I found out they were remaking it pretty much one for one with a slight brown color change. So... Worthwhile trade for me, I didn't need to have the two of the same minifigure in my collection. But moving on down here, we've got even more Rebels, kind of the overflow, as well as getting into Resistance. Probably the rarest minifigure here is Finch Dallo. They threw him into the Resistance Bomber set very late into its run, so he's a very hard minifigure to obtain. As well as the Galaxy's Edge figures, I have very good memories going there with Brick a few months ago before COVID hit, so I do like displaying those on this billboard right here. But Brick, I'm curious, I know I've heard you praising the original Tantive Four Rebel minifigures before. With those included, and even besides those, is there anything that really stands out to you? They're kind of cool. I wish that they come out with more of them. Otherwise, these are all kind of forgettable. Also, unpopular opinion, but I actually like the new X-Wing pilot helmet. You know what? I share that unpopular opinion as well. I always really liked it when LEGO chose to do dual molded stuff versus the original just kind of standard plain printed helmet. And... To be honest, I really wish that this kind of stuck around. I know that LEGO introduced these in 2018. There was a ton of fan backlash, so they kind of decided to revert back. The most recent Luke minifigures that we've gotten, especially in the at, -AT have had the original helmet, so it's kind of sad it seems that LEGO is not actually going to be putting in the extra effort to introduce these, especially because so many fans really vehemently dislike them, which, sure, I understand it's a little bulbous and strange looking, but... That's pretty much on par with a lot of other Star Wars helmets for LEGO, and they kept the new Vader and the new Stormtroopers, so I don't know why they wouldn't just stick with these, especially as it's been so many years and we've had pretty much the same helmet mold over the course of LEGO Star Wars' run. But moving on, we have a frame that is very exciting both to me and I'm sure to a lot of our viewers. It is every single LEGO Star Wars Mandalorian figure ever made, plus the other bounty hunters as well. You can see just the sheer amount of figures that they've made here, and they're all pretty visually distinct and have their own characteristics and styles, which is one of the things I really like about these Star Wars bounty hunters. They all kind of have their own thing going on. Moving upwards, some of the, of course, rarer ones, we've got Baby Yoda, the best figure, hands down, <laughs> and the original Cloud City Boba Fett, which is probably the rarest minifigure in my collection. If you look that one up on Bricklink, it's hundreds of dollars. I was very lucky to have the original Cloud City set, so I did not actually have to obtain this figure on the aftermarket. You might notice I am missing one figure, that is the Jango Fett from 2017. He is remarkably similar to the 2013 variant, so much so that I did not realize myself and I accidentally sold him. And looking back at it, it appears that the torso has a few more creases than the other version, and the belt is done very, very slightly differently, but the differences are extremely minute, and unfortunately now this minifigure is very expensive on Bricklink, which is why I haven't really taken the time to get him back, because he's just so expensive for such a similar figure to one I already own. I will get him back eventually, but it's not a priority. But Brick, do you have any favorites here or anything specifically stands out to you? I really like the the white Boba Fett as well as Pre Vizsla there. Uh, the Death Watch Troopers are pretty good. Also the Boba Fetts with arm printing, whether that be the original Cloud City one or the modern one I like as well. Other bounty hunters that aren't those, Embo is pretty cool as well. Yeah, Embo was pretty cool. Hondo is probably one of my favorites, but mostly because of the character and not specifically because of the minifig. But I guess moving on to this board, we start off with the Old Republic. I am missing one of the Republic Troopers, but I have the other one. The one I'm missing is on order. We move on to Sheev Palpatine and his disciples like Ventress and Dooku. Then we move on to Kylo Ren and even all of the Imperial Inquisitors. One of the really interesting things that I have on this board is obviously there's a tactical droid, which is pretty rare nowadays, and the Grievous figures are always very rare and hard to get as well. Moving on, we have the rest of the Separatist leaders like Poggle the Lesser, and the Umbarans and other Separatists down there. And finally, we arrive at the Imperial officers and guards, of which there are many. And then moving upwards, we have the First Order officers, of which there are 
much less because they're just simply newer. But Brick, do you have any thoughts on these figures and any one of them stand out to you as being a favorite? Okay, this one, Revan Malgus. makes me sad. Well, Malgus, I just never got. I accept my fate. Revan, on the other hand, I got in a promo from Lego, but they never sent it to me. I called them. They said they don't have it. That made me sad as I had to buy it online. Darth Maul with mechanical legs. I could have gotten for $9 in New York. I didn't. I regret that decision. The same story can be said about Savajo Press. Actually, the same can be said about a lot of these figures. So, big sad. Ah, uh, yes, I remember you telling me many tales of your misadventures in trying to obtain those. My favorite out of all of these has to either be Thrawn or Maul with mechanical legs. But I guess we can move on and now take a look at the Star Wars droids, which there are a lot. Starting off with these C-3PO figures, we've got every single one, including the very special one with arm printing from The Force Awakens. TC-14 is a very special one coming in Chrome Silver from 2012, another May the 4th exclusive, and another very rare one at that as well as TC-4 was also relatively rare and limited in a polybag form. We've got medical droids over here, and gonk! We have all the gonk droids, and in fact, the two new ones that just came out do not yet have a space in the wall, so I'll be reshuffling them at some point. Moving on down, we have all the R2 series droids and the Astromechs, like R2-D2's many iterations, and I don't have all of these, I've sold some of them, but I do have most of them. And then the rest down here is kind of overflow, so we've got Scum and Villainy on Tatooine. Specifically, the old Watto is very, very rare. And I've also left a spot open for the new Moss Eisley minifigs that are coming pretty soon. You can see some of the rarer ones here are Ula and the original Greedo, which had arm printing, which was pretty rare for a minifigure at that time. As well as the Rancor, which is probably my second favorite LEGO big fig ever done. I love the jaw and the fact that it can swallow a minifigure. And my favorite is Killer Croc from the LEGO Batman movie, which is literally the Rancor, but some would argue better. So you can clearly see which big figs that I like in LEGO. But with that, those were every single LEGO Star Wars minifigure really ever made. If you saw a gap in the wall, that's just a space for one that I don't own. So that should be about as much minifigures that they've made for the entire theme, which is a very interesting and impressive feat. But I guess moving on to the other themes, which we skipped over. What are your thoughts on LEGO Overwatch? Fantastic. Shame it had to... Actually, it didn't even have to die as quickly as it did. Honestly, I just feel like this is overall probably the strongest wave of figures we've ever gotten, aside from Mercy. That figure is horrible. It gives me nightmares. I was going to get to that one. But like, if you look at all of the other ones, <laughs> they all have custom prints, custom molds, and the price wasn't horrible in any of them. Definitely agreed. Besides the really poorly printed face on Mercy, these were really well done, and I know nothing about Overwatch, but the reason why these are displayed here is just because the minifigures are so good in my opinion, and to be honest, there isn't really too too much else I can say about them given I don't know the lore, I just think they look really cool. But I guess we can move on to what's next to it, a much larger frame for the LEGO Movies 1 and 2. There are so many iterations of Emmett. The only one I'm missing is the pajamas one because the GameStop employees made me pick between that and the Western one, and I chose the Western one, but I'll get it at some point. I also don't have every single Unikitty variant here because there are just so many. I do like this one with the brush for a tail, though, a very unique NPU there. And moving on, we have the mini Metal Beard builds, Vitruvius, and even all of the Lord Business ones complete with his extra long pants. I decided to include that one because it's kind of a funny visual to have him stand next to all of these. He takes up like three rows. And moving on, we even have all of the Lego Movie collectible minifigs down here. So the Lego Movie 1 and 2 CMFs are all represented here and spread out. We've got all the iterations of Rex down here is more of the Lego Movie 2 stuff, as you can see. And it's really interesting to me how they use this as an avenue to give us official Wizard of Oz minifigs, besides the Wicked Witch who came in Dimensions. But I guess we can move on from the two LEGO movies and take a look at the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings figures. I'll preface this by saying I'm a little biased. I absolutely love the Lord of the Rings movies. I've seen them many, many times, and so much so that I even ordered the new Night Sword from Bricks and Pieces, which was available despite being a CMF exclusive, and gave those to a ton of the minifigures here, which was really fun to do. I really like how these push the envelope in terms of what LEGO could do in terms of minifigures in 2012 and 2013, which was seven or eight years ago, so quite a long time ago. And I also really enjoy the amount of new molds we got for fantasy, like this dwarf's helmet mold is just so intricate and really detailed. And even Theoden King's mold for 2012 had such an intricate print on both his helmet and his breastplate, including the Rohan Riders as well. Just really great figures all around, and I just wish the theme stuck around for longer. 
But Brick, what do you think about these? I know that you've told me you really like the Hobbit ones at least. Yeah, when the Hobbit came out, I really liked all of those sets. I found the mini figures to be really strong as well. For sure. And I guess moving on past the Star Wars ones, which we already looked at, we have Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm a big fan of the movies. The sets were all right. The boats were really good, but the rest of the sets were just okay. You can see the many iterations of Jack Sparrow, and the one thing I really like about this is that despite it coming out to tie in with Pirates of the Caribbean 4, they actually went back and released a ton of sets from the older movies to represent the full original trilogy of Pirates movies and so on. Something that I kind of wish that licensed themes would do more nowadays, like MCU for example rarely touches the old movies, so this was really nice to get. Also, regardless of what you think of Pirates 5, the ghost figures are absolutely incredible for LEGO, but my favorite has got to be Davy Jones with his unique beard right there. But overall, Brick, what do you think of the Pirates minifigures? I don't remember anything about any of the sets other than the ship they came out with recently and the wheel set. But yeah, I like the movies. So uh, yeah, that's all I got for that one. Fair enough. I also only have these ships built out of those sets. But I guess moving on, we have LEGO spooky themes on this display. Starting off, of course, with monster fighters. I will say I do not have the zombie bride and groom here. Those were just too good to sell on Bricklink to pass up. So I don't have those right now. Maybe I'll rebuy them at some point. But I, I traded them in for some other bigger sets. But then moving on, we have all of the hidden side figures, which in my opinion is a theme that not a lot of people pay attention to, but did give us a ton of really nice designs like the pirate squid captain over there. The other one that's really nice is Nimar Rem from the most recent realm, from the most recent theme. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. He hasn't appeared in the show yet, but I really love the lower leg piece that he has here, almost like a Dementor smoke trail or a Death Eater smoke trail for Harry Potter. And I love the accompanying large, bigger figure that goes along with him. But I guess finally we can move on, speaking of Harry Potter, to Fantastic Beasts and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. You'll notice up here there's one Harry on his own and two Quidditch outfits. The reason for this is that I got Diagon Alley, but did not realize those were actually in the set, so I need to make space for those. But of course, what I really like about this theme is you can see pretty much every iteration of the figures as they grow up, from Harry even to having a baby form to adulthood, which is really nice. They do have a very nice variety, and they make sure to kind of cover every possible figure that they could have. I also love the Patronus animals that they do, like the stag here, and those are always really interesting to get those animal molds like that. Of course, we have Harry, Ron, and Hermione, the big three. Especially with Hermione over here, there's just so many different hair pieces that they've created just for her for this theme, which is really interesting to get because it's always nice to get new hair pieces. Obviously, we've got these side characters like Luna Lovegood and so on. And again, the Patronuses are really cool and introduce some new molds, like a realistic bunny mold, which I hope will get printed realistically at some point, and a realistic otter mold, which I also hope will get in a standard set. I don't know the context for that, but that'd be really nice. We did get the deer in this year's Christmas set, so who knows? Anything might happen. Moving on, we've got some of these side characters as they decrease in terms of importance to the main story for the students. But then down here we have the teachers. I really love the new fox mold, although the original one is just always very nostalgic to me. I got that when I was very young, so I do like the original one as well. It's obviously not as detailed as that. And then even down here we kind of get to some of the villains, of which there actually aren't too too many in this line. They're mostly just side characters that we get here, which is kind of interesting. Obviously down here is the animal type creatures. The centaurs are really amazing, incredible molds. And we even get a giant man style figure in the form of the giant over here. So kind of an interesting lineup of figures to get and just a lot of variety that you can get here. But moving on, we have the DC superheroes, starting with four full rows of Lego Batman. Prick, what are your thoughts on Batman? Any favorites? The titanium one from Batman v Superman is pretty cool. I like that one. Yeah, all the other ones are kind of the same. The thoughts of cape versus fixed plastic wings. Uh, for me personally, I kind of like both. I do appreciate how they're including a ton of different styles of capes in the more recent DC sets to allow people and kids especially to put them in different expressions and to basically be able to play with different styles of capes. Yeah, I, I like the cloth ones so that you can like bend them and they don't break or like get creased permanently. I do also though appreciate the plastic wings because they are very nice molds and interesting to have in flight. Obviously as we move down here we get the rest of the superheroes in the Bat family and then just the Justice League as a whole so like Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, etc. Any more standouts to you? 
Um, Other standouts of this wall, the green arrow from the Lego Dimensions video game was pretty cool. The new Aquaman, the green lantern from the CMF series, and the Robin with shark repellent. Really? That's a funny meme. I guess so. But moving on from superheroes, now we have DC supervillains, of course starting with Joker, although I will have to move every single one over when I get the new Batwing coming out in November. I did not realize they were coming out with a new one. But over here, really you can see pretty much every single DC supervillain minifigure ever. The missing ones obviously have gaps there where they should be. I really like the Bane big fig. I think that's a really good one. And moving on down, obviously Reverse Flash, but mostly because of the show, I just like Reverse Flash as a character. And of course, as I said before, my favorite big fig is the Killer Croc big fig. Obviously, you saw the Ranker earlier in this video, and he's basically the same one. But Brick, do you have any standouts from this one? Mr. Freeze is kind of cool, I guess. Oh, Black Sucker Manta's Blade. really cool. I like Black Manta. That's just because you're the Aquaman movie's number one fan. No, no, I, I just like the one. head mold. But it was also a good movie. <laughs> Changed my mind. That's the DC Ever. movie they've made. At, like, out of the DC universe. Oh, well, we certainly will have discussions on that in the future. But I guess that about wraps up the DC figures, and believe it or not, we only have two minifigure frames left. They belong to two of LEGO's original themes, of course, starting with Chima, which came out in 2013. You can see every single LEGO Chima minifigure ever made, from Laval, of course, the main character up top. And going all the way down, the thing that I did like about these minifigures is that they're pretty unique in terms of designs, and they gave us a ton of interesting new molds. Not very useful outside of the theme itself. That was a good big fig, though. But in general, some interesting figures, and not really something we've seen from LEGO really at all before. And then moving on, we have LEGO Nexo Knights. I know that fan reaction to this is pretty mixed, but... They gave some decent minifigures and interesting molds. I especially like the gargoyle wings, which are very, very nice to have, as well as some of the flame monsters looked really good as well. But I guess that about sums up our tour of all of the minifigure frames on just the entryway into the massive LEGO collection. Tune in next time where we'll be taking a look at every single LEGO Batmobile and Millennium Falcon ever created, which I have up on the walls just over to the side. So let's go and stay tuned for next time. Here's a sneak peek of what's coming up next. Thanks and bye-bye for now.